Hey guys, Thrutarian here, back with another Raven's Watch video. So, today we're playing Raven's Watch again. It's been a little bit of time, and time to pick our first talent on Sun Wukong. Uh, so, for those who haven't played much Raven's Watch, just a brief explainer of what um, Raven's Watch is about. It's essentially a roguelike fairy tale based game whereby you complete objectives on the map and then you'll verse a boss at the end. Kind of like a spy like type of game. Um, once you defeat the boss, you move on to the next act and then the next act, which is coming next week. So the third act isn't out yet because we're still in the early access, but that will be out next week as well. Uh, now, Sun Wukong as a character is a melee based character. Uh, he swaps in and out of two forms. So you have the blue stance and then which is like it, it's called yin and yang stance. Um, this is yeah so essentially you switch between two stances. In the blue stance, the yin stance, he gains lifesteal and he also gains a shield. Um, and in the red stance he deals and takes double damage and he gains strength for one second. So strength is like a bonus um, attack essentially, which increases the power of your skills. You have your basic attack, which is a chain. You have your power move, which is to dash to an enemy. And he, if there's multiple targets, he'll dash between the enemies and he's intangible, meaning that he can't get hit. And then you have your special, which you release orbs to orbit around him. And then finally you have your defensive mood, which will block any attack. This is kind of like the shield on Beowulf, except um, it's not timed. But with the empty palm defense, you have to have aim it at a certain point in time. Otherwise, it's not effective. Okay, so that's the brief outline of the skills. Now going into the talents, essentially there's up to eight levels. I'm not sure what it's going to be like once the full game releases. Um, but currently you get up to level eight talent, like eight talents. Um, in this case, each talent will contribute to one part of play style. So it, you'll get talents focused on dealing more damage with your power or changing the power in some way or your special or your defensive skills. So first we'll go into his talent. Now we have Thirst of Immortality or Stone Monkey. Both of these are, are quest type talents and with these quests essentially there is an objective to complete uh, so for thirst or immortality you you basically get magical objects with these magical objects uh, if they're rare or better then you gain two damage and once you complete it you gain extra vitality but uh, only your hero or magical objects heals are effective meaning that uh, if you heal from a healing shrine you won't get any healing uh, similarly you have the stone monkey and this one is each successful defense gains armor and this stacks up to 40 times so you can gain up to 20 armor and the way to complete it is by sorry once you complete it each block triggers an attack dealing 100 percent of the block damage as area damage so that's also quite strong as well I'm not good on this particular character uh, simply because you do have to aim your defense at a specific time. So I don't like using the defense on this character. I kind of just like dodging instead. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to pick up Thirst or Immortality. And let's have a quick look at the map. On the map, So we have the quest, side quest over in this section. I like to go to this side quest around level two or three. Um, and I like to see what else is on the map. So perhaps we'll kind of go down towards here and towards the side quest. Hopefully we'll get to level two by that point. So let's quickly go. I'm going to go out this way. Once we leave this zone, our timer will start. So we have 18 minutes and we're going to go straight towards this section.
Okay, so we do want to go into this mode because we deal more damage. Um, and one of the things about Sun Wukong is that you do want to switch between the two stances. So I'm not sure what the best tactic is on this character, but I do get that you do have to switch between these stances quite often to maximize his damage potential. Okay, picked up those shards and we pick up these shards as well. Alright, so there's another objective here. Okay. Alright, so that that's why you have to be careful on this character because you deal you do take damage quite quickly. here. Uh, in this case we have power deals 20% more damage so I'm gonna get the power and you'll, you'll see that as we do this particular quest our damage will slightly increase as well. And here we have special <clears throat> attack, uh, makes the rings, while special is active, attacks make the beads ring, dealing attack damage, otherwise you have frost tiger. I like frost tiger, so we're going to take frost tiger. This means that what we want to do is incentivize switching stances as much as possible. Explore this zone and see what's here. Heal. We also get this item here as well. Ogre Blood, or we have Vitality per object. I'm gonna pick up Ogre Blood. This will synergize very well with our trait. And now we're gonna start our quest. Okay, so 
be waiting here to, uh, to supervise the work. <laughs> So we do have to be quite careful because we take double damage. And this week we, we're going to pick up Fiery Dragon. This will make it so that our Yang Stance will now deal damage. So this incentivizes us to... Swap stances as much as possible. We'll pick up these two stacks of hay. Go up towards this area. And this is a six stack of hay, so we'll pick that up. And on the top right, it'll tell us that we need up to 15. We've got 12 so far. Uh, we'll probably want to go towards this area. But with this hay, with this particular hay quest, you can find hay throughout the map like this. So we might not even have to go towards that zone. We'll just pick it up naturally. Okay. One, and two. There we go. Now we can go towards the quest. And luckily we finished that quest quite quickly. So we're going to start the actual quest to defend the house. <coughs> so he's going to go in the house we start the quest. We need to defend his house. So now we finish the quest. Uh, here we have attack triggered after dash. Launches a rapid series of five strikes. This one is enemies hit by power are soon struck by lightning, dealing 20% damage all around. I think we'll go with the twirl because I am dashing quite a lot. And here we will go for the Tamate Bako. This will allow us to get more items as well. go towards the shrine so there's a healing shrine here Okay. I've got no sympathy for those who worship. 
We got the heal. Now let's head towards this area. So I'm going to go back to base and go around this way. We want to get the magic mirror as well, so hopefully we can pick up some extra gold too. Okay, so let's pick up the magic mirror here. And we're going to up a copy of Ogre Blood, so that's really good. So Ogre Blood is... Um, gives us extra damage per vitality that we have. We, we have 20 vitality so far, so that we have extra, two extra damage. But with the quest completion that we have of one of our talents, this will give us an extra uh, six damage per Ogre Blood. I, I think it's actually more. It's, um, I think it gives us 200 vitality, so it'll be about 10 damage or so, or so um, per quest completion. There we go, we have completed the Raven Tower. <coughs> now let's go down. There's also an, a Health Shrine there as well, so we actually might as well pick that up too. And it's probably a good time to pick this up as well. <coughs> so we'll pick that up. Now we have an upgrade. We have Transfiguration as our ultimate or monkey clone. I like kicking monkey clone. This just gives us another copy of a different hero. Um, so I think we'll just take monkey clone. I mean, I came here to play Sun Wukong. I don't really want to play a different hero. It's another treasure chest here. Now we have five minutes left, so we do have to be careful in terms of the choice of Horn of Plenty, so I'm going to pick that up. This gives us more vitality. And here's a Grimoire. Also a key as well. We'll go with the Curse Key. event and here we can pick up dash cooldown 
This one, attack gives 5% life steal, but healing orbs don't affect you anymore. With the completion of our quest, it'll make it so that healing orbs don't heal us anyway. So this is actually a good option, but we also have seven league boots. Um, I think we'll pick up Black Lotus. I've never really taken that one before. So with our quest completion, we're currently on four of seven, so we need three more items. And I am a little bit short on time, so I'm gonna quickly get this. So here we're actually going to pick up the Dream Shards. This will allow us to get the two upgrades, which are going to be cheaper. So we're going to pick up two upgrades here, this one and this one. And we want to get Silver Bullets for some extra damage. And then here we fight the next Grimoire. And then we'll go towards the money event. Okay, that was actually quite simple. So now we're going to pick up three random upgrades this will be this will cost us 100 gold per talent because we upgraded all of our talents to rare so now this essentially gives us 300 gold uh if we were to instead get it over this one um and then we're going to go down towards this event here the large dream crystal and perhaps we can also get the uh, healing fountain here as well So hopefully we can get the Dream Crystal. Let's go. My that was actually quite easy to do. So now we're going to go up this way. And we'll try and get this healing shrine as well. Uh, I don't really want to get these upgrades. This one gives us a little bit more damage. Seeing as we have two Ogre Bloods. So... I think I'll get it. That'll give us one extra damage. Alright, hopefully we can make it up here. crystals just trying to look around to see if there's any more crystals okay and then we're gonna fight the boss
Okay, there we go. Because Wukong does quite a lot of damage, it's actually quite easy to uh, fight against single targets, especially if you're stacking a lot of damage like I am. With the Thirst for Immortality quest that we picked up on level 1, that actually gives us quite a lot of damage once I finish that particular quest. We have another magic mirror, so I'm going to go straight down towards the Dream Shards um, in Act 2. We're going to go straight for this, and then we're going to pick up the magic mirror. What we're hoping to duplicate is uh, this item here. So we want to get another Oak Blood. This will give us 3 damage per 10 vitality. Currently we have 67. When we complete this one, uh, we're going to have quite a lot of vitality. So we're at 4 of 7 right now. We do need to get a few more items, so let's try and... Uh, rack up those items as quick as possible. Okay, pick up another t a 10 vitality here for free. Now I accidentally swapped stances, but it's not really an accident because I guess we do want to start out with extra damage. to unlock is another waypoint so we don't have to zoom all over the map. I do have to remember to switch stances more often because I do find that I'm not sw switching stances enough. I think that's one of the problems I have when I play this character is forgetting that I do have a switch uh, stance switching mechanic. Deals more damage. <coughs> Pick that up. So now we're at five of seven. Okay, so there's a waypoint here which we can always go back to. I'm gonna go back to base now. <coughs> and we'll duplicate another item. And this one here as well, special is active or an another attack. We'll go for this one, and we're going to duplicate an item. Now at this point, because it's quite hard to get items, I actually don't care what we get, but what we do ideally want to get is Ogre Blood. Okay, and we did get Ogre Blood, which is quite good. So now we're sitting at 40 damage, and we want to get more items to complete our quest. So we need two more. And we do have 15 minutes as well, so hopefully we can get as much done. Shrine up here as well. So 
It'll be good to get this too. Alright, pick that up. Back to full health. So, Hell Shrine here, but there's a lot of enemies, so I'm not going to go for that. We will instead go out here and activate that waypoint as well. We're going to go down to this section. There's another waypoint at this point here. So, activate that waypoint. We can always come back to later on. And up here, there's also an event here as well. This is a crystal event. Okay, this is pretty annoying. Alright. Okay, so going down this way. It's another thing here as well. going down this way there's a boss event so we don't want to attempt the boss now instead we're going to make our way to the side quests over this way okay so side quests Do have to be careful a little bit because it took quite a bit of damage there. Uh, so another grimoire event here, and actually, what it might be good for a time is to pick up some extra items. So I like getting armor, but instead we're gonna go for uh, are you absolutely sure about that? the health, and we'll pick up this healing as well. So once I get to level seven, I'm gonna make my way over to the side quest, and we'll deal with the side quest. damage. Alright, pick up this shrine. We'll 
we're almost level seven now. So actually let's go down to, into this zone and see what's over there. Is a Raven Tower here. Raven Tower and we have Thundercloud or we have Airbender. I like the fact that Thundercloud is already an epic quest. We don't need to upgrade it with gold. But we also have Airbender as well, which is quite good. I'm going to pick up Thundercloud because it's already upgraded. <laughs> we still need five more items. So let's go for this chest. Ah, sorry, we still need two more items. So we can go for the chest. And this will increase our damage output quite a lot. Have extra power charge. Go for the power charge. And we have this event as well. I might activate my ultimate here. So finally we have 700 health. So our quest is completed. So between these two events we have three upgrades at the yellow grimoire and then four upgrades at this grimoire. Um, so based on that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if we upgrade this and this to max, then we have full upgrades. So I'm going to go back to base and upgrade the base two talents. So we'll upgrade these two, which means one, two, three, four. We have seven from that. Oh. 
most suitable. Okay. Now we're gonna attempt this one. And I think we'll hit level eight at that point. I am the angry river unleashed from its bats. Three random upgrades. Now we need to get some items. Airbender, great. We have Airbender. Okay, that was quite quick. done. Now from here we want Excalibur and we need to get some upgrades. So if we can get some money upgrades that would be really good. So I'm gonna quickly go back to base. <coughs> Airbender. And if we can upgrade her one more time, that would be good. So with the last few minutes, we're just going to try and see if we can upgrade it. Over here this money event okay so it is money so that's good Great. Uh, we're gonna go back to base <coughs> So I'm gonna buy Airbender, which leaves us four upgrades. Uh, then we can get armor, but I'm gonna get heal instead. Now we're gonna go down here. And so this will give us an extra uh, 40 damage once we complete this. extra 40 damage and then now we'll go for the last remaining event here so 
So we're at 175 damage. That's really, really strong. extra power charge so That's a lot of damage. Uh, now we have the optional boss, but I don't think we can do the optional boss in that time. Uh, so instead, we'll just try and farm some extra gold so we can get another life. I think that's probably the best thing to do. The alternative is to go for this um, health as well. Actually, we'll go for the health. Let's go. My powers are waiting. Okay. Can we get another item? Okay, we are very strong right now. was a very strong run. <laughs> so that run that was one of the that's some of the highest damage I've done on on uh, Sun Wukong. 175 damage. I'm sure there's ways to get way more damage but essentially stacking up a lot of vitality with ogre blood allows us to get quite a lot of health making us very tanky and also giving us a lot of damage as well so each point of damage increases your damage by that amount so essentially if we, that we got 175 means we get 175 percent increased damage and with that we have a new story we also have chi outburst so after power hits at least one enemy the next attack can be held down to store power then release an energy beam uh, dealing up to 220% damage to all enemies it passes through 
and then we have fiery golden eyes at the start of day or night reveal two points of interest on the map personal dream shard gains increased by 20 percent as well so that's really that's an interesting one i like that one um that is quite good for co-op play as well but the raven eye itself the vision towers provide that effect anyway but the fact that you get more dream shards is quite good so this one is not really one that increases your power but this one is um, essentially dealing 220 percent power damage is quite good all right so that was my run of raven's watch i was playing on the twilight difficulty i i find playing on the twilight difficulty is quite good because this gives us a little bit more of a challenge um, than darkness mode it gives us a bit of a challenge but also allows us to have fun in terms of gaining a lot of different powers and different um, damage amounts as well so yeah so that was my run of raven's watch as always if you enjoyed the video drop me a like down below subscribe to the channel have an awesome day bye for now